Hello, and welcome to another Health Essentials Podcast. I'm John Horton, your host. It's safe to say that most of us have heard about electrolytes, and in particular, that you lose a lot of them when you sweat. But do you really know what electrolytes are and why your body needs them? More importantly, do you know how to properly replenish your electrolytes when you're low, and not just by chugging sports drinks? Our search for answers led us to registered dietitian Julia Zumpano, who's back for another podcast episode. She is one of the many experts at Cleveland Clinic who join us weekly to help us better understand how our bodies work. With that in mind, let's find out how to keep our electrolytes balanced so that you can be at your best. Welcome back to the podcast, Julia. Um, it's always a treat when you're with us. Thanks so much for having me again, John. So, so today we're talking about electrolytes. And uh, I got to be honest, if you looked in my fridge, uh, you'd see that it is loaded with sports drinks that I chug after I get done with my runs. Um, I, I, I feel like it's the right thing to do, uh, probably because of all the marketing dollars that have uh, gone into it. Uh, but if I had to pass a quiz on why it's good to replenish my electrolytes, uh, I think I'd get an F. So is that common or did I just not pay enough attention in school? Well, electrolytes are you know, a topic that I don't think pe most people understand. The general public knows we need electrolytes. They're not really sure why and they're not really sure when and how we should take them in. So I, I think that you're spot on with the majority of the, the population here. All right. Well, then that's perfect. That's why we're doing this podcast. So we can uh, let people know, uh, know what they're drinking and eating. So uh, let's, let's just get right into it and start with the basics. Uh, what are electrolytes and, uh, and why do we need them? So electrolytes are electronically charged minerals and they help regulate several processes in our body. They regulate our pH our fluid balance, they are essential for our heart and our muscles, our brain and our nerves to function. So really, really essential. It's so odd to think that we're consuming like electrically charged things. I, so It is a very odd concept to understand. So, so what do they do? I, how, do how are they working inside you? So they all work a little differently, you know? So each um, different electrolyte has different properties that it provides. But, you know, the electrolytes all work together. So it really is important that we have a balance of all the electrolytes, not just focusing on one. So, you know, they work with um, bringing energy in and um, removing waste and you know, balancing the fluid in our bodies. It helps regulate our nervous system and muscle contraction. You know, it helps our brains and our heart function properly. So all of those are essential and they all work differently, a little differently in the body, but they all work together. So it's really important to make sure you're consuming all of your electrolytes um, in adequate amounts. Well, and I was going to say, what happens if, if, if you do go low on them? I mean, all those things you mentioned seem really important. So if, if you're not getting enough electrolytes, what, how are you going to feel? What's going to happen? So, you know, there's symptoms of an electrolyte imbalance and, and there's very, a, a whole slew of symptoms that you can experience. Um, a lot of them happen with muscle twitching or muscle cramping. You may have an increased thirst. You may experience poor endurance, especially with exercise. You would crave, maybe have certain cravings for specifically salt or other minerals. Um, you even may find you're a little bit more irritable or feel more um, brain fog. You can even have a regular heart rhythm or regular heartbeat. And headache and dizziness are two additional side effects that you could experience. So as you see, there are so many side effects because there are so many electrolytes. So each one may lead to a little bit of a different side effect. Yeah, it definitely sounds like, I mean, you're going you're gonna to feel it if, when you're low. Um, so how do we know if we're getting enough electrolytes? I mean, I know you look at the side of a label. It's not like uh, it just says electrolytes and you're getting, you know, this much. Um, how do you make sure you're getting what you need? A majority of us can get our normal electrolytes in through a, a healthy diet. So, you know, if we are exercising or we have a strenuous job, we're working outside, we're sweating a lot, or we're just what we call super sweaters we may need a little more electrolytes than, you know, the basic average person. 
So it really is a very personalized thing. Um, you know, in general, if we eat healthy, we should be able to obtain all of them. But if you know you're not eating so healthy, again, if you know you're exercising strenuous, you are a super sweater, you really want to consider replenishing those electrolytes and you'll almost feel better immediately. Now, when we start looking at where these electrolytes are at, there, there are certain minerals that that are kind of the, I hate to say the carriers or the, the big uh, the providers of it. So what what are those? So, you know, the most common one that most of us think of is sodium. Sodium is um, mainly found in salt, which is sodium chloride, and chloride is another electrolyte. Sodium is responsible for the balance of fluid. It also helps us absorb nutrients. Then there's magnesium. Magnesium is another more common mineral. Um, it also is very essential. It's really important for our brains and muscles. They need magnesium to work. It also helps put, convert nutrients into energy. So that's what really magnesium does. So, you know, when you're low in energy, magnesium, if you're low in magnesium, that may be one of the reasons for that. Potassium, another um, very common mineral, um, it's used with sodium. So they work hand in hand, they work together. Um, it's very critical for the heart to work. It's critical for heart health. Then there's calcium. Calcium is not only key for bones, as we always have thought and known about, but it's also really important for your muscles and for your heart rhythm. Then as we, I talked a little bit about chloride and how it's, um, you know, often linked with salt, sodium chloride, but chloride is very important for fluid balance and pH. And then there's phosphate. So phosphate is a phosphorus based molecule and it helps us metabolize nutrients, and it is um, a foundation of the building blocks in DNA. Going over all those, I know at the start you had mentioned that that electrolytes come in all these different forms and do all different things, and you can you can really see that when you you're laying out those different types and how they all have their own little unique role. It's like uh, one big electrolyte team. Absolutely, they all really go work hand in hand, and it's really important to have a, a balance of all of them and try to be aware of, you know, consuming all the electrolytes you can um, within your day. Now you had mentioned sodium as being kind of a key electrolyte and, and sodium is one of those things that when we talk about, there's, there seems like there's a lot of bad that gets talked about with sodium that you want to limit it in your diet and things like that. Um, how do you kind of manage that and, and make sure then you're getting what you need, but yet, yet not overdoing it. So you get those negative effects. Sure. So, you know, there's a lot of controversy around sodium. Uh, you know, for heart health, we recommend anywhere between 2,000 to 2,300 milligrams of sodium a day. You know, uh, and some, you know, some health advocates would consider three to five grams of sodium being a healthy intake. So I think that, you know, it's key to look at an individualized approach to how much sodium you might need. You know, are you, you want to look at your cardiac health, your blood pressure. You want to look at, are you an athlete? Are you sweating a lot? So your needs may vary drastically based on some of those factors. Um, another key point that I think is often overlooked is how I said that sodium and potassium work together. So oftentimes when we're not eating enough potassium, we need to have less sodium. And if we're able to increase our potassium level, then we can safely have more sodium without negative effects. So I think we've really missed, um, you know, the, the take home message here with really encouraging potassium. And another great benefit to increasing your potassium as it's found in the best possible foods. It's found in fruits and vegetables, beans and nuts and seeds. So and some dairy has potassium. So it's really found in phenomenally nutrient dense whole foods. So I think that, you know, as in an average standard American diet it is very low in potassium and very high in sodium. And I think that's just creating a very poor imbalance of electrolytes. So if we're able to increase our potassium drastically, we can probably handle a little bit more sodium, especially if we're handling it from natural sources like added salt where you're getting the sodium and the chloride versus in processed foods 
where you're getting a lot of processed forms of sodium. And I'm glad you brought up the whole the salt versus sodium thing. Cause I know that's something I think people confuse a lot. They think it's one and the same, but but they 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 are different, right? When you're looking at them in 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 food ingredients and, and things like that. They are different. So salt is made of sodium chloride. So we do know that salt is sodium and chloride together. Uh, sodium can be separated without chloride and added to certain foods and, and can be found naturally in certain foods like celery and like pickle juice, things like that. Now, do most people get enough electrolytes just through their, their basic diet? Well, you can if you're eating a healthy diet. Um, if you're eating an unhealthy diet, you could be lacking adequate uh, electrolytes. So if, you, if you're eating a healthy diet, um, it looks like you're, you're going to be getting enough electrolytes, but I take it if you're doing more activities, if you're physically active, if you're running or exercising a lot or working in the yard, um, you're going to need to supplement it somehow. Yeah. Another time you may need a supplement too is if you're just not feeling so good, if you're dehydrated, you know, if you're kind of you know, having bouts of diarrhea, vomiting, again, you're losing a lot of electrolytes then. If you're having a fever and sweating a lot, we want to be aware that like you're you're going to be losing those electrolytes, you know, through those processes. So you really want to replenish electrolytes in those cases as well. And it really will help you feel better. I know everybody thinks of sports drinks when you think of electrolytes, but the truth is uh, like said, it can be found naturally in, in a lot of food too. So what are, are, are some of the, just some basic foods that you could have where it's going to kind of boost your electrolyte uh, supply? So electrolytes are found in a whole slew of foods, right? So we, we named all the different electrolytes, the sodium, the potassium, the magnesium, the calcium, the phosphates, the chloride, right? So there's six minerals there. They all provide, they're all sourced in different foods, but you know, there's a common theme. And the common theme is that they're found in fruits and vegetables. They're found in beans and seaweed, dairy, dark chocolate, fatty fish, olives, pickle juice, bone broth, um, nuts and seeds, and then leafy grains. So, you know, a lot of whole foods, really. If you're eating a very, a diet very rich in whole foods and, you know, fatty fish and nuts and seeds, you're really going to be able to meet all your needs, um, again, except for those populations that might be needing um, re the, the replenishment of electrolytes for um, that extra sweating or, you know, times where we may, may need to replenish. But from a day-to-day -day standpoint, you should be able to be meeting your needs. You know, it's amazing as we've been doing this podcast for, for months and months and months now, how many answers simply come back to eating healthy. <laughs> it seems like that solves so many things in life. I do truly believe food is medicine. So definitely. Um, now, now sports drinks, as we mentioned, uh, get a lot of attention when it comes to uh, replenishing electrolytes. Uh, what makes them so special and effective at doing that? So I wouldn't consider them special. Um, I would think that they were very highly and well marketed. Um, they do have, you know, some electrolytes added with water. Um, they do generally have a good amount of sugar added and food dye, depending on the brand and the kind. So I think that it's important if you are going to choose an electrolyte replacer, an enhanced beverage, you look at the other ingredients and make sure it really does have adequate amount of electrolytes. And it's not mainly just sugar and food dye or even artificial sugar and food dye. So I'm um, really looking to make sure it does replenish those electrolytes that we we uh, mentioned, specifically the sodium, potassium, magnesium, and, and even calcium. So just making sure that you do get some of those electrolytes. So I'm more of a fan of some of the, like the powders that you can kind of mix into water, the electrolyte enhanced, enhanced waters that are just plain water that have the electrolytes or minerals added. Um, there's even tabs, tablets that you can put in your water. Um, those generally have a lot less sugar, no dye, and then they um, have more volume of, of what you really need. I did not realize that those tablets and, and, and you know, dropping those into water, that, that you really got that much less sugar and, and I guess, the, the bad stuff than just having a, a regular bottle of it. You really want to label, read, and compare. But, you know, from what I've researched, most of the tablets are around 25 calories. 
less than a gram of sugar. And when you look at, you know, maybe a standard sports drink, you're looking at up to 150 calories per bottle, you know, maybe up to 20 grams of sugar, maybe more. So you just really want to compare labels, you know, always want to read. There's so many products out there. You don't want to make an association that just because it's in a tablet, it's perfect or it's a powder, it's perfect. You really want to be able to read and compare and be educated on what you're putting in your body. And like you said, it sounds like the key is to look for those uh, electrolyte, those electrolytes that you were talking about, the sodiums, the calciums. Potassium is key, especially if you're exercising because those muscle cramps, um, you know, are going to be pretty significant if you're low in potassium and that sodium and potassium, again, they go hand in hand. Now, now this seems like a question that always comes up. If you, if you're working out and you have a, a big, big workout and you're done, is it better to drink an electrolyte sort of drink or, or water after you're done? Again, depends on how, you know, how much you sweat, but I think elect- that would be a great appropriate time to have electrolytes to kind of replenish what you've lost. Um, you know, electrolytes would be in water. So you'd actually be getting both. So you'd be rehydrating and then having the water enhanced with the electrolytes. So the answer would be both. Now, now a question that comes up a lot too, I saw people searching for online was whether you could overdo it with these sort of electrolyte heavy drinks. I mean, is there any kind of negative effects if you just, you know, pound it all day long? Absolutely. Absolutely. These minerals are important to keep at a good balance in our body. So we can certainly have negative effects from too much potassium, too much sodium, too much calcium, any of them um, in excess can lead to really negative health outcomes. So you really want a a safe and healthy balance, Um, you know, one or two electrolyte drinks a day, you depending on you may need more depending on your activity level, but you know you really want to see how you feel. You don't want to overconsume. Um, you want to just be very aware of how your body, what your body needs, and how much your body is losing through liquid and sweat, and then just replenish what's lost, and and then the rest is water is fine. But you you certainly can go overboard. It sounds like you don't want to treat an electrolyte drink like, like it's water and you're just, you're, you're drinking it all day. Use it kind of tactically um, as, as the need kind of comes up. Right. Right. And again, there's some people who need more, some people who need less, some people who need none. So it's really being able to find um, what your ideal, you know, intake of electrolytes will be and, and kind of maintain that and, and know that, you know, we're coming to, to the summer months, it's hotter out. So, you know, a lot of times you could be more, you know, more in need of those electrolytes throughout the summer. And, you know, a lot of times when we drink something that has a little sodium or potassium, we almost immediately feel better, you know, that the heat can kind of feel, make us feel a little sluggish, lethargic, kind of achy, tired. And, you know, some of that could be Due to, you know, this electrolyte imbalance or, you know, got not having enough electrolytes. So it's just important to listen to your body and, and try something as simple as drinking an, an electrolyte enhanced fluid or making your own electrolyte drink and seeing how, how you feel afterwards. And funny you brought up the making your own because I had read where there were homemade electrolyte drinks. Like what, how does one even go about doing that? What, what, what's in that? So most of the time they're, um, you know, of course, water-based and you, you, the, they have the basis of, you know, a source of, uh, of food from each of the electrolytes. So they're going to have, a, you know, citrus source. So they might be orange juice or lime or lemon or grapefruit. Uh, they'll usually, of course, have salt added, um, whether it's sodium chloride or sodium on its own. Um, coconut water is a good base with, um, some of these electrolyte drinks. It's very high in potassium, um, may have a little bit of raw honey, some ginger. So that's kind of the basis of it. And you're getting a majority of what you need there, um, replenished, Um, especially like maybe making a nice pitcher of it and having it in the fridge, um, to kind of sip on throughout the day or have it ready after an activity or you're doing yard work and outside or going swimming or whatever you might be doing where you're um, definitely sweating more and may need some of that replenished. We have covered so much ground uh, in this chat. I mean, I feel like I don't need to recharge my electrolytes just from, from how much we've, we've done here. Uh, but so before I hit the fridge, uh, is there anything that we missed covering? 
No, I think we covered it all. I think the, the take home message here is individualization of your diet and really practicing a whole foods, heavy plant-based diet. So not that you're only eating plants, but make sure you're, you're really eating a lot of plant-based foods and um, high quality nutrient rich foods throughout the day. And you know, you're gonna meet a majority of your needs if, if you really follow that type of eating plan. Great tips as always, Julia. So can't wait to uh, have you back on again for um, to get more wisdom. Thanks, Sean. Electrolytes are essential minerals that help your body function. When you're running low, like after a workout or when you're sick, you'll definitely feel it. But you'll be back in business if you follow Julia's advice and eat the right foods or grab the right drink. Till next time, be well.